Hello, I'm Odin, and this time I'm going to make something that you're not just going to be able to carry around in a con, but you can actually use. It's a machete from Friday the 13th or Dawn of the Dead that's got a cutout so you can kill teenagers with it or zombies. First, I want to cut in and thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. There will be more information about them towards the end of this video. So I've made a machete before in my Three Swords video. What I want to do this time is actually make it thinner and then I'm going to make a notch out of it. So when you pose with a picture with somebody, you can hold up against their arm or hold up against their neck or their head and actually kill them in the photo. When I made the first machete, I used a graphite golf club stick to keep the props stiff. This also forced me to make it from two layers of 10 millimeter floor mat. This time, I plan to use a kite rod. It's not actually carbon fiber. I think it's still a graphite rod, but it's seven millimeters thick, so the machete can be much thinner. I will use the same pattern I made in the Three Swords video, tracing it out on black three millimeter craft foam and green one and a half millimeter craft foam. I let the handle fall off the edge of the craft foams because I want the blade itself to be one continuous piece of foam, no seams. I need to make the handle, or the grip, thicker anyway, so I cut a set from 10 millimeter floor mat EVA foam. Cut out all the pieces. The template I'm using is in the description for download. You can print it out and make one of these for yourself. Now it doesn't matter what color of foam you use. It's all going to get painted anyway. I use green and black so it would be easy to see which layers I put where. I overcut my lines a little. I want the EVA foam to be a little bit bigger than my finished blade because I want to go back and trim all the layers down equally after they're glued together. I trace the handle shapes and cut two more out of three millimeter black foam. With all the parts cut out, I start to glue the layers together with contact cement. Now with contact cement, you paint it on both pieces as you want to glue and then you let it mostly dry. Then the parts will stick together. Now you can't always reposition a piece once the cement makes contact. You'll probably just tear the foam trying to remove it. And if you do, just cut out new pieces. When you stick them together, don't stretch the thin layer because that will cause the blade to curve. Just be careful, start at one end and work your way across. Then mash it down good once it's in place. I also glue together the 3mm grip pieces. Now my plan was to have a thin green layer in the middle, then a 3mm black layer, and then a finished layer of green to hide the graphite rod. I will glue the last layers of green later. First, I press the rod into the foam to mark where it needs to go and cut out a channel for it to lay into. I also make one for the handle. The rod is slightly smaller than this channel, so it won't bulge outwards into the finished blade. I set the parts together and mark where I need to cut the graphite rod. I just use my Dremel to cut down the rod and sand off the sharp corners. Now I think a hacksaw or a jeweler's saw can do this too, I just haven't tried it to be sure. I spread contact cement on one side of the blade and grip and on a green blade skin piece. Then I coat the inside of the channel and I cement the rod too and set it on some foam so it doesn't stick to the paper. Now I could glue the rod in first and then add cement for the green skin, but by doing it all at once, I only have to wait for the glue to dry once. I stick the rod to the blade, keeping it as flat as I can, and then I stick the little back strip on. Glue on the grip the same way. Obviously this one could have waited longer to dry. And then carefully lay on the first green skin piece. I can still warp the blade if I stretch the green foam, so just lay it down smoothly. Flip it over and glue the other side the same way. What a shock. Cut my handles too short. I need to cut them a bit longer. I traced out a new set and cut longer ones. And this time I slightly curved the end where it meets the blade. Before I glue the grips on, I want to trim the five layers of the foam blade so they all match. I use a ruler to keep the back straight, but I didn't leave enough extra foam to make this cut easy. The cut isn't clean, it keeps falling off and just chewing the edge up. So I sand down the edge with my belt sander. That's easy. A palm sander can do this too, or if you have the patience, you can do this with just sandpaper. Now it's going to take longer, but you don't need a power tool to do this. I use one of those puzzle edges from the floor mats to trace a line along the blade. This is where I want the sloped edge of the blade to stop. There we go. I made it oversized, so it's exaggerated and it'll be easier to see in pictures. I carefully sand the edge from this sharpie line down to where I can see the middle green layer show through the cutting edge. That way, my slope is as consistent as I can get it. 
I sand down both sides and I'm careful of the tip. I don't want to sand it down so it looks dull. Always drag the foam on the belt sander. Don't push it into the belt. It'll really tear up the foam or just launch it out of your hands. Now, glue the grip on. Gluing them on after you sharpen the blade lets the blade be sharp all the way to the grip and you won't have to work around it. Now I'm going to sand down the handle, make it all flush around the sides and round it off, which will get rid of the darn texture, but by gluing the smooth sides to the smooth foam on the inside, I'll actually have a nice invisible seam, much like the back of the blade here. And I do another pass of the blade too. I still need to use the Dremel for the finish of the grip. I use a sanding drum to put a bevel on the edge near the blade, and then I round off all the handle sides and smooth out the inside corners where the belt sander couldn't reach. And I still lightly sand the grip to remove any fine lines left from the Dremel. The grip should look like wood, so I very lightly score wood grain lines into the grip. These cuts are very shallow. Then I use a heat gun to seal the foam and open up the small cuts. The effect is really subtle, but it works. I change the bit on the Dremel onto a grinding stone, which has an end that when pressed into the foam, grinds out little circles and I can add three to each side of the grip to look like rivets. And you could stop there. You've now got a perfectly con-safe machete that you could carry around as either Jason Voorhees or as a zombie hunter, but I still want to take it the one step further. What I want to do is actually cut a semicircle out on the end of the blade so it'll fit over an arm. To trace the cutout, I roll a foam ruler to be about 17 inches around. This is an average adult neck. Then I hold it against the blade and trace it. I set mine right up to where the graphite rod is. I want this to be as deep of a cut as I can make it. And then I cut it out with an X-Acto knife and sand the edges smoother. Now it's raining today, so I have to paint inside. I use plastic dip paint to cover the foam. And now that's a flexible vinyl paint that bonds really well to the EVA foam. And I spray on two coats. And when it's dry, I can spray the blade with a bright silver spray paint. Spray paint sticks to the plastic dip much better than it sticks to plain EVA foam. For the grip, I just paint it brown with some craft paint. I don't fill the rings around the rivets, I want them black, and it takes a couple of coats to cover the overspray from the silver spray paint. I then paint some gold paint over the rivet heads, and I wanted them gold so the rivets would be different from the blade. And I can always go back and touch up the blade with silver if it needs it. Because it's raining, the paint is going to take longer to dry. So I set up a fan to blow air over the paint to dry it out. Once all the paint is dry, I start to rub shoe polish all over the blade and handle. I like how it darkens the bright silver and the browns, and it'll help to make the shadow areas a little darker. Just rub on polish, maybe thin it with some water and a brush, and wipe off any drips or places that have too much. More fan. Here's a chance to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. You can easily create a beautiful website or online store with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade, ever. They offer award-winning 24-7 customer service, and Squarespace has a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. Go to squarespace.com slash odinmakes to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So I've given the water and the shoe polish a chance to dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to seal it with a matte sealer, a flat finish. I want to do that because I have a plan for the next step afterwards. What it needs is blood. What I want to do is I want to paint some blood splat around the entry point here. So when you actually bring it down, it can kind of look like it's actually cutting in maybe a little bit, but at least it'll be something there. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint the patterns on so it's running in one direction, like towards the handle this way, and then on the other side, do it so it's falling gravity that way, right? So you got here and gravity's going to go that way, and then here and gravity's going to go that way. So let's do that. I mix a little bit of blue into the bright red to make a blood color, or you could buy a pre-mixed blood color. I don't have one. I paint the edge of the cutout first, then I start to add drips down the blade itself and keep them all going the same way. I don't paint on very many blood drips. I want some red, but I mostly want a silver blade. I try to have the blood run along the edges, but not over them, because each side runs its own way and the camera's only going to see one side at a time. 
And so the last thing that I want to do is actually put a gloss coat on the drips of blood because right now they're not exciting at all. Now I could use different craft paints for this. I could use simple gloss sealers and you maybe even a clear nail polish. What I want to use is floral wax. Now this is actually an acrylic based floor wax. This one specifically. And since it's made to be walked on, it'll actually keep it shine for years. I've put it on the chainsaw, which you can't quite see from here, but the drips in the chainsaw are still shiny, whereas the dull parts in the chainsaw are of course dull. So all I'm gonna do with this is pour a little bit in and then hand paint the shine floor wax directly on top of the blood and then we'll be done. I was lucky and found the graphite rod at a thrift store, but all the other parts I bought locally. I put a part list in the description. And that was my idea on how to make a machete with a gimmick. So the thought was that it'd be kind of fun to maybe dress up as some sort of machete wielding maniac, say, you know, Jason Voorhees or maybe a zombie hunter. Of course, you wouldn't want to carry this around because it looks like a can opener. So you'd stash that somewhere in your costume and then you could actually have a proper machete you could walk around and threaten people with. And then if somebody actually wanted to take a picture with you, well, you set this one aside, you pull out the gimmick one, and then as Jason Voorhees, you could dispatch teenagers, or if you're a zombie hunter, you could do the Dawn of the Dead thing and take care of zombies, whichever way you wanted to go. The thing I really do like about this machete is how much thinner it is. It is half the thickness of the original one I made. And that's because it's just a kite rod inside of layers of craft foam instead of a golf club inside of two layers of the floor foam. But you know, both are pretty easy to make. Both ones I made in one day. And so now you have different options and how you can make a machete. But no matter what you do, this is how Odin makes. I want to say thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. And if you happen to like this video, you can buy me a coffee. And if you like what I do, you can support my channel on my Patreon page. If you have ideas or something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <sighs> Do 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 do.